welcome or welcome back to my channel by Emwoo. I'm Emwoo, aka Marianne, and today we have episode eight. Who does this? Eight, eight, eight <laughs> of my knitting podcast. I actually started with Napa in the shot but she started freaking out the moment I started pulling stuff out. You can probably still hear her in the background. I apologize if you can hear some like crackling. That's her eating her pellets. But we have a jam-packed episode as always. I'm starting to realize that these episodes are filmed every four weeks or so. And that seems to be a decent amount of time for me to get some knitting done. If you want to see them more frequently, let me know. Otherwise, I think these monthly-ish podcasts work out well for my schedule. We have a handful of finished objects, a couple new whips, and some yarn acquisitions that are always exciting. Before we jump into that, I will talk about what I'm wearing today. So this is my Fab Cardigan by Clara Eggers. I finished this back in the beginning of the year, maybe in March, and it is, to be honest, my second finished garment that I've ever done. It's finally cool enough where I live to wear it and I am stoked because I finished it right around the time when it was starting to transition into spring and I only got it to wear it like once or twice before it was too hot but now that it's getting cooler I am busting it out and it's so cozy. This is a brioche stitch cardigan knit in the We Are Knitters The Petite Wool. I specifically chose the natural color which is just this like natural color and hand painted sprinkles which is this really pretty fun like multicolored yarn. It was such a joy to work with. It was my first time working with like unspun yarn and so that had its kind of experience but it's really cozy, really warm. I absolutely adore this cardigan. To consider that this was my second full garment and I went ahead and did brio stitch. I think looking back is a little intense, but it all worked out and I'm so happy to be wearing it. All right, with that out of the way, we can talk about finished objects. The first one is actually one that I don't have anymore. I just shipped it out two days ago because it was a gift knit and it was a baby bear bonnet for one of my coworkers. And she's expecting a little boy in either December or January. <laughs> he will come when he's ready, but I thought it would be nice to knit a little something for his little head. If you guys have been following along for a while, you know that I did knit one of these back in probably July or August for my nephew. So this is my second time doing it. I did it in the smallest size this time because he will be a newborn when it's a winter time. I knit this one in the Knitting for Olive Merino held with Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair, both of them in the Dusty Artichoke color. Love the pattern. I think it's probably my favorite baby gift knit and probably one that I will continue to do. It's just so cute but simple and a really fast knit. The smallest size that I did took me about two days of knitting. Um, I think even the one that I made back for my nephew a couple of months ago was maybe the third size, like the three to six month size. And that one maybe only took like three or four days. Like they're really fast knits, they're so adorable. Whether or not they're a bear or a cat, I'm not too entirely sure, but it's cute regardless when it's on a newborn's head. I realized that I misspoke. I actually knit this one in cotton merino, um, not merino, but nevertheless, it held up really beautifully. This was my first time using the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair and it's lovely. I I think I want to use it more moving forward, but for some reason it's not like my go-to and I feel like that's because it's just not easily accessible where I live. I definitely know places where I can get the Sand Niskarn Tin Silk Mohair or Silk Mohair more easily and the one place that I can think of that's local that does carry the Soft Silk Mohair doesn't have the wide range of colors that other places usually do and they typically go for more bolder colors which are totally cool but not up my alley. I'm definitely more of a pastel-y muted colored person and so I don't think I gravitate towards that much. Moving on. Okay, Napa is like on this side and she's pissed off because I just moved a fabric. Um, if you can hear her in the background, she's out. It's okay, you're okay. Yeah, it's just this fabric, I know it's scary. 
The second finished object that I have for you guys is a test knit and if you guys follow me on any social media or even just on YouTube, this one will probably come as no surprise, but it is my Lily Frail Sweater Test Knit by Masami, also known as Kamike Designs. And it is this glorious, complete mohair sweater with this really beautiful frill on it. Try not to go into too much excruciating detail because I posted a process knitting vlog about this two weeks ago, but it's a crew neck shaped mohair sweater that in this front section here has mohair held single, which gives this really beautiful like translucent look and this really pretty frill. I knit this in Drops Kid Silk in the color 37. I think the name of it is North Sea or Nordic Sea. I feel like I should know by this point, but I still don't remember. And it's this really beautiful like blue emerald green color. I adore it. I had such a great time knitting this. It was actually a fairly seamless knit and while it was my first time doing a test knit and I don't really know how they typically go, I had a pretty good experience with it. There were minor things here and there that were pretty easy to kind of fix with the designer, but overall I adore this. The only couple things that were different is that my sweater is maybe a centimeter or two shorter than the recommended in the pattern, primarily because I ran out of mohair. And then my frill is a little bit more frilly <laughs> than the one that she has in her sample. Um, it's because I read the frill wrong. But in all honesty, I kind of like the excess frill going on. I think it's a little bit more eye-catching. She also has a sample version without the frill. So the sweater is also very versatile. I really, really like it. I think it's gonna be great for the holiday season and it's just so fluffy and soft. I, I really do adore it so much. Quick comments about the yarn. This was my first time working in the Drops Kid Silk Mohair, and it's a lovely yarn to work with. It is mildly itchy when you wear it like next to skin. I don't think it's anything like crazy, but relative to the Silk Mohair from Sandis Garn that's in my Mauricia cardigan, I definitely found this one a little bit more irritating than that one. I really enjoy it. I absolutely love the color. You'll see this color again later. I've talked about in the past that green is kind of like my color of the fall season, which is totally cool with me. And nothing but great things to talk about this. If you guys wanna check out my process vlog while I made this one, I will post it up here as well as in the description below. All right, we have two more finished objects, both of which haven't been blocked. If you're new here, uh, let me inform you that I don't define finished objects as having to be blocked. My mind finished object is that I can just wear it. And I recognize that blocking does a lot of wonders and magic. And in some cases, a finished object doesn't look good until it's blocked. But as long as you can wear it, I think that's done. Because like, Blocking's kind of just like extra pizzazz at that point. It's like really nice to do, but you don't have to do it. Whereas like if your garment's not finished, that's like a no-brainer, you can't wear it. Does that make sense? Regardless, that's how I define finished objects here. But the first one is a very heavily modified Sophie scarf. It's kind of like a half scarf, half shawl style. This is a gift knit, which I won't disclose who I'm gift knitting it for because I believe they watch my podcasts. And so if I say that, it won't be a surprise. Whereas I think if I don't tell you guys, it will still kind of be a surprise, if that makes sense. <laughs> so like I said, this is a heavily modified Sophie shawl scarf mix. I based it mostly off the Sophie scarf pattern, but aside from the like setup and the general like concept of it, Everything in terms of measurements has been modified. So I knit this using uh, every six row increase slash de decrease, which is a little different from the Sophie scarf pattern. I did follow the i core edging and the back and forth garter stitch. Up until a certain point, I decided I didn't want to do increases anymore. And so this middle section here is basically just a long rectangle. And then um, once I got to the matching edge, I started doing decreases. And if you actually notice, you probably can't really tell on camera, I did the decreases backwards. So 
if I hold this flat, you'll see that this side leaning left, whereas this side is leaning right. So they're kind of like opposites. Whereas if I had done it like symmetrically, they would have both been leaning in the same direction. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyways, I think it's a lovely scarf. I wanted it to be kind of longer than the little one that she had, but I didn't want it to be a full blown shawl, if that makes sense. Hence the kind of weird sizing here. This one is knit in what I think is Santa Scarn Double Sunday, and I will explain why I say that in a second, but the colors that I used are Dusty Rouge, I believe is what the name is, and then Oatmeal, which is color 1015. I think that's like my favorite neutral color. Every time I see Santa Scarn products, I always gravitate towards it because I think it's like the perfect off-white color. I find that some natural off-whites are kind of yellow undertoned, and I just think this one's like a really nice, clean, simple palette. Okay, so what I mean by the I think is because I had a weird hiccup with the pink yarn when I purchased it. When I originally purchased it, it was labeled as Santa Scarn Sunday, and I was buying it with the intention of Santa Scarn Sunday. When I, so I ordered this, and when I opened the package, I noticed that it didn't actually really feel like it met that gauge. It felt more like a double Sunday. After some back and forth with both Santa Scarn and the shop that I bought it from, we came to the conclusion that it was probably mislabeled without getting into too much detail and being triggered by my own story. <laughs> I basically decided not to return it because in order to get a refund and exchange it for the right thing, I would have had to pay for shipping and it wouldn't have been worth it to just ship back two skeins of this, like half across Canada. And so I ended up keeping it and it's just been in my stash kind of haunting me because I couldn't use it for what I wanted to use it for because it wasn't fingering weight. And I thought this was the perfect makeshift. So. I know for certain that the middle color, this 1015 section, is double Sunday. So that's why it is. I think it was mislabeled because it fits perfectly in with it. I will say the color segment like this kind of reminds me like a weird Canada flag. Oh, Canada. If you know what I mean. I think in retrospect I would have done like more of a striped pattern, but Ryan says he thinks it's cute, so I'm not changing it. I loved working with the Santa Scarn Double Sunday. I loved working with this pattern, even though I really modified the pattern. And I think it's going to make a great gift knit. I'm, I will block it before it goes out, and I think it will help because I think the blocking will really soften the fabric in a really beautiful, nice way. So, yeah, that's the weird Sophie shawl scarf thing that I worked on. The last one is another petite knit pattern. And this is one that I've been working on for almost two months now. And I haven't really talked about it on the podcast because I was originally filming a process video. I decided to end up scrapping that video, but I will talk about it now because it's relatively finished. Again, need to block it. I think this one for sure needs a block. Something's weird about the sizing. Before I get into that, this is the Seal Slipover by Petite Knit. It's this really beautiful classic shaped slipover that has this texture on it that I absolutely adore. The texture is what caught my eye in the first place. I thought it was so nice. It wasn't too obnoxious, but it wasn't just plain stock and knit. That being said, I do plan on making a stock and knit version of this, maybe slightly modified. It is supposed to be oversized. I think because I ran out of yarn again with this one, I wasn't able to make it long enough and therefore it's more like squat than I think I wanted it to be. I'm hoping that blocking will help it. I started this in the beginning of September and it was a pretty quick knit, all things considering. It took me two months to actually finish it because I had to put it on hold for about three weeks while I was doing the test knit for my Lily Frill sweater. Uh, but once I finished that, it was a really fast like finish off because there's no sleeves. Once you finish the body, it's just like the collar, the, the like edging around the whole armholes and the body at the bottom and you're done. And so I knit this in the Sandness Garn Perfect, which is a DK weight sock yarn. It is 80% merino, 20% nylon, and it has a really nice finish. It's not rustic like the Pure Gint, but it's not as soft as Double Sunday, and it just reminds me the slightest of acrylic, and that's probably because of the nylon, which I do find very interesting because I've worked with like 
80% wool, 20% nylon before in the form of socks, and it doesn't feel like this. And I had a different color of the Perfect that I knit in DK Way Sunday socks in the last podcast that also didn't feel as acrylic-y as this one. We'll see if blocking it will really help with the shape, and you can kind of see that it's like really wide in this bottom section and while I think it's supposed to be like that it might be throwing me off because the 2 by 2 ribbing is kind of like condensing it towards the bottom. I really enjoyed the way she had you finish it. She had you finish it with like a double knit at the very end which is really nice and clean and I definitely will steal that and use that in other projects if I ever do a 2 by 2 rib moving forward. I'm trying to think about what I said in the process knit that I want to impart with you guys Overall, it was like a fairly straightforward knit. Nothing too surprising because it's a petite knit pattern. You start this project knitting flat, the back yoke and then the front yoke, and then you join at a certain point to do the body and the round. At that join, it can be a little confusing because you're on one row of the repeat for the back yoke and a different row of the repeat for the front yoke. I ended up fixing it by just doing an extra row in the front so that they were be aligned while you actually joined in the circle. That's not entirely clear in the pattern. But if you have just a little bit of knitting intuition, I don't think it would be too bad to do this. I think that's all I have to say. I, this is like one of the first times that I'm not like so thrilled with the final product. And that's totally fine. I think that's part of the experience. I'm really holding on to hope that blocking will help. But I don't know, some part of me isn't really convinced that it will. But I will keep you guys posted. Hi, editing Marianne here. I wanted to quickly jump in and just give a small update on the sale slipover. I managed to block it this morning. It is currently drying right now. I think blocking helped a lot. I won't know for sure if I'm satisfied with it until I get a chance to wear it. But as of now, it stretched out a ton and I think the fabric relaxed really nicely with the block. Um, I am optimistic that it is going to turn out okay because yeah, I really, really wasn't happy with it pre-block um, and watching the footage back again, it really solidified in me that I was really unsatisfied. But I think we will be victorious. I really do love the way that it's constructed. I really like the saddle shaping in the back and the, the overall pattern. And I would make it again. I think I would probably modify the width if I was to do it moving forward. Let's move on to current work in progresses. So really quick update on my second version of the alpaca muscle bro from Ryan. I have officially made it to the orange section in stockinette. So the end is near. I think I have about another two inches of stockinette and then a de decrease in the crown and it will be done. For those of you that are new, this is the muscle bro hat by Yolanda Teague. It's a gaugeless, Pretty basic but very versatile pattern that creates a really long tube like so that you can invert on itself and have a two layered hat, beanie, whatever you want to call it. And it's really customizable. You can do different colored brims for the different colored crowns. You can add what I did here which is uh, one by one ribbon, you could do two by two ribbon, you could just do stockinette. The possibilities are honestly endless and it gives you size ranges from like infant all the way to extra large male, I believe. So there's literally a size and an option for everyone. It's gaugeless, so you basically choose the yarn you want and you follow the pattern and it tells you how to make it the size that you want it to be. And it's such a versatile worth it pattern. It's one of those patterns that you look at and you're like, is it worth spending the money for such a simple pattern? But 100% this one is. I will always endorse it. This hat is my fourth one. I adore it. I will also explain why I call it the second version. So I've actually done an exact version of this back in May for my husband, Ryan, for like kind of an anniversary present. And that one unfortunately fell into the wash and felted. I'm like staring at it right now. It was too small and he was distraught because he absolutely adored this hat. And so I luckily had enough leftover yarn to make him a second one and thus far I am making him a second one. It's this really beautiful local alpaca yarn and it's so soft, I absolutely adore it. I have been having a harder time knitting this one and I think it's because it's the fingering and I forgot how like slippery the baby alpaca is, but we're making do and we're almost free and I'm so excited to give it back to him. 
I have both the original and this one on Ravelry if you guys want to see the specific sizes that I did. The only update that I did for the second version is I did a twisted rib in the middle versus just normal one by one ribbing. I think it will give it a little bit of a cleaner look, but that's the muscle burl there. I'm hoping that I will get that finished sometime, but that's gonna technically be his Christmas present now. And so I have a little over two months, a little under two months. Christmas is in two months, oh my God, um, to finish that. So there's that. The next two work in progresses are using yarn that I've had in my stash for a while because I picked these both up in Seattle when I was doing my trip there. The first one is a pair of socks. I am knitting the Guernsey sweater socks by Summer Lee. It's in her Hello Sailor sock set, I believe. And it's these really cute cabled, I don't know if you can see that. There's like a little bit of cable detailing and a pearl ribbing here that I find so cute. I'm making them shorty because I've decided that I like shorty knit socks better than like calf length. And these ones are knit in the Hedgehog Fibers sock yarn in the color Serengeti, which is this really pretty like cream green with flecks of pink and orange. This is my first time doing cabling on a sock and my gosh, it is way slower than I thought it was going to be. I'm kind of really happy that I decided to do make shorty versions because they would be taking forever. You can probably see that I am doing these two at a time. I thought it would be easier to be consistent with each other if I did them at the same time because I 100% would mess them up. I always mess up my socks when I do them separately, which I don't really care. Your feet aren't the same, so your socks don't need to be. But for the sake of less mental thinking about what I did in the past, I figured I'd just do them together. And I'm really excited to get back into the sock knitting. I kind of fell off of sock knitting. My mojo wasn't there, and I think it's because of the fingering weight, but I really like the way that this hedgehog fiber feels. I'm really liking the way it's knitting up, and it really matches my fig plant that I have here in the corner, which is really cute. So really excited about this one. That's just a little update on that. I haven't made a lot of progress on this in the last couple of weeks, and I suspect it will always be kind of like in the back burner. Typically socks I like to carry around while I'm like traveling or doing stuff, but because these kind of require a little bit of mental thinking in terms of the repeats and the cabling and I have to bring my cable needle around, they're just not the best get up and go kind of socks. But I think if I was to sit down and work on them, they would fly by really quickly. This next one is an exciting one. I don't remember what state this one was in in the last podcast, but I have finally been making progress on my step-by-step -step sweater by Florence Miller. I think I talked about this in the last podcast now that I'm holding it up. It is triggering the memories. I made quite a bit of progress. I am pretty much done the body. I have just to do the ribbing on the bottom and I am obsessed. So if this looks really familiar, I am following the inspo pic photo from Katie Does Knits. She made a version of the step-by-step -step sweater that had these like light and dark brown stripes and she called it her coffee stripe sweater. I saw that before I went to Seattle and I was like, I need to make that sweater. And so I went to Seattle to go to Joann's with the mind of picking up fisherman wool in those three colors to make that sweater. So I am in the process of making this. I adore it. Uh, it's been a, such a fun knit. It's been a big change to knit on 5.5 millimeter needles, which doesn't sound like a lot versus four, but they knit so much faster. Fisherman wool is so nice. It's such an affordable yarn. I loved it so much that I asked my sister to pick up a second skein of it or a third skein. This would be my third skein of the oatmeal because I want to make a slip over with it. It's just so nice, so soft, so affordable. I think when she picked this up, it was like 11 USD, which is like unheard of to get 100% wool, 227 grams, for 425 meters, like that's insane. How do they do it? I don't know, it smells so good. It smells like wool, it feels really nice. It's a little scratchy, but I had slipped it on the other day and I didn't find it too bad. I definitely have noted this before, but I'm not too sensitive. I would say it's comparable to pure Gint in terms of scratchiness. Anyways, that's enough about the yarn. 
I also adore the pattern. The step-by-step -step pattern by Florence Miller is a free pattern on Ravelry. She also has a YouTube tutorial on it. I will be totally honest and I messed up at some point. I think I lost track of the number of increases I was doing on the raglan and I kind of just went with it. So I'm not really following the pattern exactly. I'm knitting something in between the size A and B. It's like an A.5, A and a half. Can I mix numbers and letters like that? I don't know. But I put it on the other day and I think it fits really well and I think it will block really nicely because this fabric feels like it will bloom beautifully once it's been blocked. I'm doing a little fun test with this one and I'm timing how long it's taking. If any of you guys want to guess how long it's taking me to get to this place, let me know in the comments. I will reveal the answer at the very end. <laughs> it's a lot more than I thought it was going to be and it makes me really realize that anything else that's like fingering weight or not stock it at probably takes an insane amount of time. I think I'm gonna try to make a sweater and time like a cable sweater or something just to see how that goes because yeah the amount of time it takes to do a knitting pattern like this is kind of crazy but I enjoy it and that's why I'm doing it but it was a little mind-boggling. She gives you the option to do short row shaping or like plain in the pattern and it's really beginner friendly. I would really recommend this if someone was interested in knitting a sweater for the first time. I think the combination of the heavier weight yarn and the simplicity of having the pattern written out and then the associated video would make this a really nice project for someone as the first time. And then the last thing I will comment about this before moving on is if you guys are interested I did eight rows of the colored stripes flanked with 12 rows of the oatmeal color. I thought it would look a little better with like the variation in width, which I really, really like. So I anticipate a couple more hours on this to finish it. And then I will have a really cozy sweater to wear around the house. Last one is one that is brand new. You guys have not seen here on the podcast and I am so, excited about this one you guys honestly can't I, I just yeah I I don't have words <laughs> clearly so this is the alder sweater by the Crayabea this is this really beautiful two-tone colored work sweater that she designed and released relatively recently I think by the time I cast it on it was only like a week old or something and I adore it guys like look at this it's so cute so fun the way she has you do the increasing for the raglans is so genius and i am obsessed i'm using a new yarn for this this is one that i picked up from my local yarn store and it is the i have it here the west yorkshire spinners fleece the blue fleece lancaster in dk it's this really pretty plush like DK way. It's so soft. I honestly think it's like my favorite DK wool that I've worked with so far. I just, I honestly adore it. It wasn't the cheapest, but I think it is so nice. And then the color selection that they have, they don't have a huge one, but every color that they have is like so approachable and workable. It's taking me a lot longer because this is a color work sweater. And so it's a four row repeat. And in order to make like a little bit of progress, you have to do those four rows. Uh, but I am really enjoying the knitting. It's such an addictive repeating pattern and I actually think it's really relaxing despite it looking very complicated. I have nothing but good things to say about the pattern so far. It's been really, really, really easy. I think it's a little daunting when you first open the file. It's very text heavy but she explains it very thoroughly and she has a huge size range and every one that it she has it listed is very well detailed in terms of like how to split for sieves, when to split for sieves. I haven't had a problem. Love the yarn, love the pattern. I'm really excited to see how this goes. I've been working with this for what feels like ages and I would argue that I've probably spent the same amount of time doing this one as the step-by-step -step sweater and you can tell the difference in the amount of time or the amount of progress that I've made. Last couple of things I will mention about this because I could honestly gush on this for forever is just the size and what I'm doing with it. So her pattern is pretty size inclusive. It I think can accompany a bust size of 60 inches, maybe more. I don't want to miss say that. but. 
I personally hit the smaller size with zero ease. So this sweater, I believe, is supposed to have four to 10 centimeters of positive ease, but if I went up to the second smallest size, I would have had a little bit too much ease. So my compromise was to do the second smallest size on a 0.25 millimeter smaller needle, if that makes sense. So as a recap, I am making size B. I think it's alphabetical, so I think it's size B, maybe, whatever the second size numbering naming is on 3.5 millimeter needles versus the 3.75 that is recommended. And it's giving me a denser fabric, which is what I really wanted. And I'm hoping, I didn't end up doing a second swatch. I'm hoping that I will get like a six to eight centimeter of positive ease with the final product. We will see. If not, I'm gonna be so sad because um, I'm gonna have to spend a lot of time on it. But technically, even if it's zero positive ease, it will still fit okay. The very last thing I will say about this one is that if you're looking for a yarn that has really good color definition, this is probably not the yarn for you. It has a certain amount of fuzz that I don't know if the camera will pick up. The fuzz from the darker yarn kind of encroaches on the definition of the white and the white kind of encroaches on the definition of the red and I think it gives a really nice texture. But yeah, if you're looking for like very distinct coloring, this yarn doesn't do that for you. But it's so soft, it's so nice to work with. It's like super stretchy the way you want wool yarn to be. And yeah, I am obsessed. This is kind of like my comfort sweater even though it's like complex with the color work. It's just so relaxing and I am really excited to keep working on it. I also don't know if I mentioned, I am using the white color. I don't remember the name, I'll put it on the screen. And the this reddish berry color is called berry. But yeah, love, love, love. And I will continue to work on that because it makes me so happy. We will quickly plow through the yarn acquisitions. I have a couple to show you guys. First batch of yarn I got from the Knitting Loft based in Toronto when they were having their anniversary sale. I actually had ordered it before the last podcast, but it came in the day after I filmed that. So it is going to be in this one. I picked up three types of yarn from here. They are here. Um, this first one is this Beaches and Bouche Le Sock yarn. That's this really fun, like, sprinkle rainbow colored. I adore it. It's called Warm Sunset and this is 80% wool, 20% nylon UK yarn. You get 400 meters for 100 grams and I'm planning on making like matching family socks with this one. So I've got two skeins of this. I'm gonna knit a pair of lawn socks for Ryan, a pair of shorties for myself. If I have extra I am going to make leg warmers for Jube and I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to convince Naps to wear socks, so I'll probably have to make like a sock ornament in honor of her. But that's my plan for this one. I thought it'd be really fun to do kind of like that as like a little fun project. It was kind of expensive sock yarn, but it made me so happy. The colors are just to die for. I also picked up some yarn for some of the fall knitting plan projects that I have in mind. This one, I think I talked about in my fall knitting plan project video is the Double Sunday in the color 7281. It's this really pretty green blue and it kind of matches the soft silk mohair. I think actually that would hold really nicely if you wanted to do like a combo. Um, but this is going to be that kind of self-drafted based off the strange brew sweater pattern from Tin Can Knits firework yoke sweater that I talked about in that video. I'm gonna hold this as the main color and then use the like firework patterning that I still have no idea how I'm gonna do because I haven't really sat down and like thought about the design yet in Double Sunday 1015. I don't have the 1015. I ordered originally five skeins and then when I put the order through it was like, these are unavailable. So they only sent me one, which is what I used for the Sophie shawl scarf thing that I showed you guys earlier. So I had to order the double Sunday in 1015 from a different store, which is in the mail right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if it came tomorrow, right after I showed this again. But really like this color. I'm really liking this like 
green, blue, emerald, evergreen color. It's such a fun vibe. I love it. The last thing I picked up from the Knitting Loft is this Pascali Mandua, which is a mohair silk merino yak mix. I didn't know it had yak. Um, that probably explains why it feels so nice, but it's this really fun blue cobalt bright color. If you guys have seen my fall knitting plans video, which if you haven't, I will link it above and below. I want to make this homage cable knit sweater to a sweater that I had as a child and it was this really blue vibrant cobalt. Um, my plan is to hold this with the De Rerum Natra Penelope yarn in Mezenage. I held them together when I was at the knitting loft back in the beginning of September, but the cashier told me at the time that they were having a sale at the end of the month, so I waited, but then they didn't have enough of the Penelope when the sale happened, so I only ordered this and I ordered the Penelope again from a different store because I really want to start that sweater. And yeah, I should have checked the composition earlier, but this is 45% mohair, 25% silk, 15% virgin wool merino, and 15% yak, and it is the most interesting mohair I've ever felt. It's very... I don't know how to describe it, like, it feels like it has substance. Sometimes I feel like when you hold mohair, it like feels very airy and light, where this one feels like hefty, like in a good way. So I'm really excited to see how this knits up. It was a very expensive mohair. I went all out for this sweater because this sweater is like a sweater that I've been dreaming of for way before I started knitting. And so I'm really excited to create it, but. Yeah, that's that. I'm really happy with the color too. I think it's gonna look really nice against my very pale yellow toned skin, but okay. The last thing that I will recap is the Lion's Bridge Fisherman Wool. I already showed this in this video, but my sister picked me up another skein of this when she was in the States. And my plan for this is to hold it with the t Make It Tweety that she got me for my birthday to make a vest. I think that would look so nice. I did do a swatch where I held this with like a more white natural color and I thought it was too stark and I think holding it with this like creamy grayish is gonna be a really really nice but I'll have to make a swatch for that. Apart from the whole bunch of yarn that I bought for the alder sweater that's also technically new but you guys have seen that's all for me today. Like I said, I'm sure I'm gonna get that second package of yarn <laughs> tomorrow or something, and I'm gonna have to include it in the next podcast. Let me know if there's any other videos you guys wanna see because I would love to cater towards you guys, and if there's any information or content that I could produce that you guys wanna watch, I would love to do that for you. But with that, I will wrap it up here and probably go grab lunch because I'm really hungry. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. You guys mean everything to me. I am so thankful for this community and getting to share all of my knitting projects with you guys. Knitting is such a fun pastime for me and to be able to create with you is honestly such a blessing. Thank you so, 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 so much for supporting me and my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Bye for now.